What's up guys, Top Tier Yu-Gi-Oh here, and today I want to bring you guys an ABC deck profile because I know you guys have been asking for it, I know a lot of you guys love ABCs almost as much as I do, but this isn't going to be a normal ABC deck profile, this is going to be an ABC True Draco deck profile, or ABCD, whatever you want to call it, Draco ABC. I want to first start off by talking about why I'm playing this build versus a standard build or a more combo heavy build. And I do think that the more combo builds are more fun. Like I really enjoy summoning a bunch of crazy links and multiple busters on turn one or the, the combo with Waterfront and Gamesio. I think that's really cool too. Link to that in the top right corner of the screen if you're interested in that because you can summon like Firewall, uh, Buster Dragon, and a Gamesio with multiple counters. That's really cool on the Waterfront. But that's aside from the point. I digress. But I think those builds are fun. But I think this build is better. I think ABC True Draco is the way to play ABCs right now. And the reason I think that is because ABCs, while being a very strong engine themselves, they lose to a lot of the cards that are commonly being played to counter other decks as well. And so what I mean by that is everyone's, or not everyone, but a lot of people are playing Cherries. And I'm seeing more and more people play Cherries plus Buster along with their Electromites. So that hurts. When you get cherried, you turn into a rank 4 deck, and rank 4s in Master Rule 4 are bad. Another card you have to go against is Barrier. Everyone's playing Barrier. Everyone's playing Lancia. Both of those cards will stop you for a turn. And that's a lot of skip your turns, and you don't want to be going against skip your turns. Next, they do not have very many strong matchups by themselves. And so if you look at the Pendulum matchup, it's not too bad. But what happens is when you tag out your Buster, what they'll do is they'll make Starving Venom to copy your Buster, and then they'll use Buster's effect to banish one of your pieces, which can disrupt your engine and make it really hard for you to play following up. And then knowing they can summon multiple Venoms, they can actually pretty much summon multiple Busters against you that pierce. That's actually ridiculous, right? And so it's really hard to play against that matchup, plus they have a lot of cards that make it hard to play through their defense. Like it's hard to play through Vortex Narito or Vortex Tornado Dragon or something. So that matchup can be difficult. Then if you look at Invoked, Invoked is actually almost unwinnable because they can just banish your pieces from the graveyard to summon Makaba. Trick Stars can be hard sometimes because if they can banish a piece that you need, then it can be hard to play through that at times. Drake is a hard matchup because they can summon a Mono Iwato, which cuts off your Buster Dragon. And then they can just like pick your field apart. And then when they summon Masterpiece, it can be really difficult to answer that without having to like Buster Banish Diagram and then attack over it. But that means that you're not using your Buster on the Masterpiece and it just leaves you open for Masterpiece to pop Buster. And so you have to like play through their Trap defense, their Masterpiece defense, and then banish the Diagram and then attack over it. And that's just like a lot of work that a lot of things have to go right for. And it's hard to really rely on that in that matchup. And so I don't think that these are all like terrible matchups, but they're definitely not good. And so it's like you're losing to all the other cards in the format. You don't have any really good matchups. And so how are you going to win? See, I felt that I really needed something else that wasn't just like summoning Buster because summoning Buster just wasn't enough. But I felt that the true Draco engine, while also synergizing with the ABC engine, is a card that was so strong that Masterpiece could carry me through those matchups. So like when you get barriered, Masterpiece can can carry you for a turn or two or when you get Lanciad or like any of those cards, I felt that Masterpiece was just a really, really powerful card to include. And again, it's just an extender as well. So it has a lot of synergy. And it's a really strong card on its own, which again, really helps a lot when you're being stopped by all those other things. So I don't want to spend too long talking about how awesome this is. I want you guys to figure that out for yourselves. But uh, to start off with the deck profile, we'll start with the ABC engine. We have two A's, two B's, and two C's. Next we have three hangers, three terraformings, and one set rotation. Another advantage of this deck is that you are allowed to play set rotation. And the only other way to play it before was if you're playing Ravine, which spoiler alert, we're also playing. But the problem with playing a lot of Ravines is that if you just get destroyed by any hand trap. Whereas like I'd much rather get a Diagram Ghost Ogre than a Ravine Ghost Ogre. And so that's it for the ABC engine. For the True Draco engine, we have three Diagrams. And Diagram is really good because it's also an extender in a lot of ways, because you can destroy your ABC pieces to get them in the graveyard, which is the point of like every other option of extender. Like all extenders do for ABCs is get them on the field or graveyard so that you can summon Buster Dragon. And Diagram does the exact same thing while searching you more powerful cards. Like you can search cards like, like I mean, all the True Draco spells and traps are good, but also Masterpiece. So Diagram's actually insane in that way. Then we have one Heritage, one Return, and one Apocalypse. These on their own can be sort of like bricks, which is why I don't want to play multiple copies of any of them. But them in conjunction with a diagram, like any of them is masterpiece. So like if you have heritage diagram, you just search masterpiece and then you have heritage masterpiece and that's like the juice. Or if you have a trap in masterpiece, then that also works. Or even if you have like, 
it like it just doesn't matter like any combination of diagram with any of these spell or traps or masterpiece equals masterpiece on board which is ridiculously strong of course but it also means enabling your abc combos if you have that as well and then finally the two aforementioned masterpieces i was actually playing three for a while but the only reason i cut it down was that it doesn't really fit the definition of what a three of should be it's not really good in multiples it's not good in simplified game states it's not good in a, a few other scenarios but it's so powerful you do want to play at least two so now let's move on to the rest of the extenders and so i already explained that diagram is an extender and that's actually really good because you have terraforming and set rotation to search that as well but as for like the the strictly extender cards you have three gold gadgets and three silver gadgets i like both of these as your extenders because they don't require any engine requirements so it's not like brilliant fusion or symphonic warriors where you have to play like a brick card because your your true draco cards can already be brick sometimes so i didn't feel comfortable playing any more like other like strictly bricks and so that's why i like the gadgets a lot but also they're really strong in a simplified game state to where in some cases you can just like set them and pass and your opponent can't kill you unless they make like a big play and then you just stop their big play and you you live so another really cool thing is that they synergize really well with diagram so diagram can destroy them in hand to get their graveyard effects and so if you have diagram and a true draco card you can use diagram to destroy the gadget in your hand search a true draco card the gadget will trigger special summoning another gadget and then now you have tribute fodder like something to tribute with and masterpiece and so that's just a little combo that gets you exactly where you need to go it also helps you do rank fours without normal summoning which can get you to your other parts of your engine once we get to the extra deck but that's also really good same thing with links and synchros it, it just helps you make more plays without normal summoning when you combine with diagram but if you do have to normal summon it's also a good normal summon and so i, I do really like the gadgets a lot uh, next for the extenders we play one dragon ravine because it gives more utility off of terraforming and set rotation but there are also certain hands to where like dragon ravine is good so like if you just have b and terraforming and nothing else like hangar doesn't do anything diagram doesn't do anything but ravine will actually get you there as long as you have something to discard and so i do like ravine in certain hands and also if you're playing against i wouldn't say a mirror match because like how likely is that to happen but if you're playing against true draco or trick stars this does give you access to ancient fairy dragon which can clear their field spell and get you to yours which is really good uh, and then next we have one destrudo which is sort of like a brick but not always because there are certain hands where it is good to draw so like if you just have hanger destrudo that's gonna uh, it's gonna let you do a combo if you have another abc piece in your hand it's also something you contribute for masterpiece at times and so it's not like strictly an engine requirement like it isn't like like a brick but it's like half of a brick because only maybe like half of the time or less it's really terrible to draw and so it's kind of weird to where like if you want to like look at engine requirements you kind of have like like destrudo and then the three true draco cards but none of them are always a brick so even though you have like four sometimes brick cards it's maybe like you're only playing like one or two actually which is sort of weird to say but you know what i mean the next extender we play is one foolish burial because it does work well with hanger to where like in a very simplified game state you can just like summon piece equip another piece and then foolish the third piece or you can also use it to send uh the strudo so there are certain combos where it's pretty good but but it is sort of iffy to where i did just want another extender but this is something that could be changed for a different card in the future if you wish so this could be that third b that i was talking about earlier or it could be another defensive card which we'll get to very soon actually and then the final extender that we play is monster reborn and i actually really do like monster reborn in this deck because you can monster reborn back your buster dragons and then use them again and again which is really cool and there are certain combos when you're going second when you can monster reborn anything back from your opponent's graveyard and just being able to make a quick link or something helps you do your combos to get to a buster dragon and so it it helps when you're going second but it just sucks that it doesn't do anything going first and so this is also like foolish burial to where if you wanted to take this out for something different i, I wouldn't fault you with that like it would make sense in certain cases to take this out for possibly more defensive cards next for the other defensive cards we play one book of moon three ash blossoms and two torrential tributes book of moon is a card that i'm really high on right now i think it's really powerful because of its its versatility it can be a breaker when you're going second to help you break your opponent's boards or it's defense when you're going first and i just love that it can be either one of those like you really want more cards that serve multiple roles and i think that this is one of the only like spell cards that can do that so i'm really just playing it in like every deck right now i think it's very very strong ash blossom i think is the most versatile hand trap which is why i'm playing that and torrential tribute in my opinion is the most powerful actual trap card so that's why i'm playing that now the only reason i don't play three is that i don't think it's extremely good in multiples although it's not once per turn and it does have a little bit of synergy with the deck in that if you destroy your gadgets you can get their gadget effects 
if you destroy your ABC pieces, you get those effects. You can also equip C to things to make them unaffected. Your masterpiece is often unaffected. Cleefort Genius is unaffected. And so this is something I would consider possibly bumping up to three. And so like you could maybe take out Foolish and or Monster Reborn, maybe add in a third torrential tribute. Or you could add in like maybe two hand traps, like two ghost ogres. And so I'd be curious to see what you guys think about that. Would you continue playing the foolish and the monster reborn? Or would you take them out for other cards? And then finally for the deck building requirements, I played three pot of desires. And this was also something iffy to me because usually I do like to play the three Bs, but since I'm only playing two, it sort of felt weird and scary to play the three desires. However, I think it's actually necessary for this for this combination of engines to play. And oh, also Destrudo is something you, you don't want to banish, but I think it's necessary again because if you look at the true Draco engine from a resource management perspective, you need card advantage in order to use it. Like you need Diagram, which doesn't do anything by itself. You need another card to destroy, and then you need another card to use whatever you search with it. So like if you destroy a card just to search a masterpiece, but you don't have a spell or trap, then that's not very good. And so you need card advantage to use Diagram. And so you need more cards to give you more card advantage. And then Desires is one of the very few cards that you can just splash into a deck. That's an easy plus one that gives you more card advantage. And so I felt that it was necessary, although it is risky. And so I could see cutting it down to two, but I think you have to play at least two copies of it. And like, yeah, sure. Like sometimes you banish all of your pieces or sometimes you banish the Strudo or maybe both your masterpieces, but it, it's very rare. And because you are playing two different engines, there are times to where like, you might banish your, both your masterpieces, but then you draw into like, I don't know, hanger gadget until it works. You might banish all your pieces, and then you draw diagram when you already had like a masterpiece, so you get there. And that's really sort of the beauty of this deck. However, one of the most skillful things about playing it is knowing when to use desires, when to take certain cards out of your deck before using desires, and how you just use it in general, I think is a very skillful aspect of this deck. But let's go ahead and move into the extra deck. First, we play three Buster Dragons, the boy, uh, next we play one Ancient Fairy Dragon. For the rank 4s we play one Gear Gigant X, which comes up very often where you might draw a hand of like just two gadgets or gadget plus A or C that doesn't let you get to the rest of your engine. And so what you want to do in a lot of cases is just use Gear Gigant X to get you to that B that's going to get you to the rest of your engine or whatever machine monster you need. Then we have one Tornado Dragon that's one of the best defensive rank 4s along with Baguska which we also play. And then we play one Bujinte Tsukuyomi, which comes up in very similar scenarios as the Gear Gigant X, but in those cases, sometimes you don't need another ABC piece. Sometimes you want to draw extra copies of, like, defense. Like, if you just draw two monsters and no defense, you need to draw into, like, an Ash or a Torrental or a True Draco Trap or something, and it's really good in those cases. For the Link monsters, we play one Firewall Dragon, it's just a generic Link 4, and in most cases when you do links in this deck you're just climbing up one at a time and so having a generic link four does actually help you a lot and then you can actually use firewall dragons affect a special summon from your hand when you tag out with busters so that does come up sometimes although it does suck to give your opponent that uh that link arrow next you play one Borload dragon and one skull deep these are both what you go into most of the times after you tag out and they really just seal your games and so it's like you tag out and if your opponent has a monster you go Borload and you just like take their monsters, summon a bunch of uh, buster dragons and kill them. But if your opponent doesn't have a bunch of monsters or something, or say you can't kill your opponent, then Skuldi's really good for drawing you into more copies of your defense cards, like drawing into your masterpieces and your diagrams and stuff. It's really, really good. Because again, you need card advantage for that true Draco engine to work. This helps you get to that. Next, we have one Deco Talker. It's just a generic Link 3 for helping you Link Climb. For the Link 2s, we play one Clee 4 Genius and one Underclock Taker. Both of these are actually really, really good. And so Clee Forward Genius is unaffected by spells and traps, so that's actually ridiculous, and other Link monsters too. And then you can also negate cards on your opponent's side of the field, which helps you break your opponent's boards if they don't stop this. And then if you summon this and then tag out, you can search a machine level 5 or higher from your deck, which we don't play in the main deck, but we do play one on the side deck, and that's actually a really cool interaction. And then Underclock Taker can reduce your opponent's monster's attack, and so a lot of times that's going to help you like OTK your opponents. And so like what will happen is you'll like make this, decrease your opponent's monster's attack, then you'll climb into a decode talker, summon double buster, and then like decode double buster's game. So underclock's really good, however there are certain times where I miss playing like a third link too, and I wish that I could just play like 16 cards in the extra deck because I would do that, but you, you can't. And so I think one of the things if I were to take something out for another link too, like maybe proxy dragon, I would possibly take out either Gigagant or Tsukuyomi because they sort of serve the same role, possibly firewall because that doesn't come up as often in this deck. Or maybe 
or maybe Skull Deep because the good effect does require four different monsters with different names and we only play like five different names of monster in our deck so sometimes this can be hard to make too. Sometimes you will need like another link too but not always. But that's just something to think about. And then the final monster that we play is one Clara and Rishka. Uh, I really like this card a lot for when you're going second because it's like a one card combo for a, uh, for a Buster Dragon. And so what you do is you have or I guess it's like a 1.5 card combo to where you need like Hanger and then any ABC card. So what you'll do is you'll summon either B or C, equip the other copy of it, and then in your main phase 2 you'll link for this. When B and C go to the graveyard, use both of their effects, you search a monster, you summon it, and then you link with this and the monster that you summon for Underclock Taker. So then you have like Underclock Taker and all three pieces in the graveyard, you banish all three of those for Buster Dragon. And so that comes up all the time when you go second, so it's really good and I think you sort of have to play it. It's one of the sleeper cards from this latest set, but it really helps a lot. For the side deck we play, 3 Artifact Lancia and 3 Dimensional Barriers. These are especially for uh, Invoked, which again is one of your hardest matchups because they just like really just banish all your ABC pieces. It can be very difficult, uh, but Barrier is also good in a lot of other matchups. It's good in the Mirror, it's good against Pendulums. Evenly matches for True Draco, which again would normally be a hard matchup, but the True Draco engine actually helps that a lot because you can get rid of some of their floodgates that would be hurting you, some of their strikes, their again their floodgates, their their other cards that would hurt you, you can get rid of. But evenly match helps get rid of all of them at the same time. So it's a little bit more efficient in that regard, but uh, it, it does help. Next we play three Eco Mystical Spirit of the Forest. And this card is is uh, pretty crazy actually, but it's a hand trap that you use against the pendulum FTK. And what its effect is, is that when you take damage from an opponent's card effect, you special summon it to your side of the field and inflict that damage to your opponent. And then both players can't take damage for the rest of the turn. And it's really good because it's level 4, so it has synergy with the rest of your engine, so you can use it to uh, to make Tornado Dragon or Baguska to help you break your opponent's pendulum board. And so I wanted things that are good going second against that FTK because I think that's so scary and you don't really have space for many hand traps in the main deck. But at the same time, I didn't want to lose card advantage by using cards like Ghost Dogger or, or Cherries, which also needed more extra deck space, or Veiler or things like that. So I wanted something like this where it stops the FTK and it puts something on my board to work with, so I can also tribute it if I need to do that. Now the downside is that it doesn't have as much overlap in other matchups, but at the same time I do still think that it's very strong. And so it's just something that I've been testing lately. Again, I don't want to lose to that FTK deck, which is like really really good, so uh, that's why I'm playing that. Next I do play two Ghost Dogers because I do think that it's versatile in other matchups, and I did want a few other cards for going second. You could also replace this with other breaker cards such as Kaijus, I think Dark Hole Ragaki would be good, I think Mind Control is a really good card, but I just felt that these were probably the most versatile options. And finally I play one Jizukiru, the Star Destroying Kaiju because it's again a good card going second just in general, but also it's a machine monster that's level 5 or higher, and so you can actually search this with Cleave 4 Genius, and so if you do go second, and you would side this in every time you go second. Whenever you can uh, tag out when you have Cleave for a Genius, you just search this so if your opponent does ever break their board, which they probably shouldn't be doing anyways, uh, you just use this to clear the board again and then continue to play. But also, it can just be something that you discard for Buster Dragon if you, wanna, if you don't want to discard something else. And so I really like playing this card in the side deck. I know it's sort of weird just playing like one Kaiju, but it just works in this deck. It has synergy and so... I like it a lot. And so let me know what you think of this deck profile down below guys. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, or suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for like an updated ABC deck profile, and I hope you guys weren't wishing for a standard build. I just think that that problem, I just think that that build has too many issues right now, and I felt that this build fixes a lot of them. And so I hope this, and so I hope this helps you guys. I hope you enjoy it. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're still here. And as always guys, I'll see you in the next video.